Today we're going to be looking at lithium batteries. Now there's a lot of misconceptions about these, but there's also a lot of benefits of having them. So whether you already have a lithium battery in your machine or you're looking to upgrade, we're going to go over some of the most frequently asked questions about these batteries on how to store them, how to charge them, how to take care of them, and why you'd even want one in your machine. So let's go ahead and jump into Lithium Batteries 101. To start out, let's take a look at some of the benefits of having a lithium battery. And throughout this video, we're gonna be comparing the benefits of having one of these versus your commonly found lead acid battery. So to start out, the first and most obvious benefit is gonna be your weight savings. So your average lithium battery is gonna save you about 70% of your weight. Now, both of these batteries go to an XP1000. And with these, we're actually saving about 20 pounds by using a lithium battery. The second benefit of having a lithium battery is it's gonna have a two to three times longer cycle life. So that refers to the amount of times it can be discharged and recharged. Typically that's gonna be about 3000 cycles and that equates to about five to six years before you start losing performance. And that's as long as the battery is properly maintained. Now everybody loves more power and that's what you're gonna be getting with a lithium battery. So these have a 13.2 resting voltage and they offer up to three times the cranking amps of your standard battery. So all of that's gonna to translate to quicker starting. Another benefit with lithium is you have more mounting options and that's because there's no fluid inside the battery. So these can be mounted in any orientation. You also have the option to get a physically smaller battery that still supplies as much power as a lead acid equivalent would. So these are gonna be great for custom bikes. Some lithium batteries actually have tech built right into them. That's known as the battery management system or BMS. Now that's actually a chip inside the battery that keeps it working in the optimal range. It helps protect the battery from overcharging or over discharge. Those are two things that could potentially damage your battery. So if that's the feature you're looking for, make sure you check the product description because not all batteries come with that feature. So those are some of your benefits with lithium batteries. Now let's jump into some of the questions we get asked all the time. So for the first one, let's head outside. The first question we get asked is how well do lithium batteries perform in cold weather? Now you might've heard of someone you know having troubles with a lithium battery in cold weather, but those troubles stem from not being warmed up. Now these batteries need to be warmed up in order to reach their full cranking potential. And the cool thing about them is once you put a load on them, they actually start to warm themselves up. If you have a machine with a headlight, an easy way to put a load on the battery and get it warming up is to turn on your headlight. You're gonna wait 30 to 60 seconds, then you can try to start it up. And if that doesn't work, repeat the procedure. Now, if you have a dirt bike or any other machine that doesn't have a headlight, how you're gonna warm up the battery is by cranking the engine over for one to two seconds without starting it. You'll wait 30 to 60 seconds, and then you're gonna try again. And once the engine starts to crank over easy, then you should be able to start it right up. The next question we get asked a lot is, do I really need a special charger for my lithium battery? And the short answer is yes. Now, even though your machine charges around 14 and a half volts and works great for either type of battery, the chargers are different between each battery because they have a different chemical makeup. Now, one of the killers of a lead acid battery is sulfation, and that's just a buildup of crystals on the plates, and your charger is gonna try to break that down by sending voltage spikes, and then it can get a full charge on this battery. But if those voltage spikes go into your lithium battery, it's gonna cause damage. In addition, the lithium charger is optimized for both the self-discharge rate and the absorption rate of a lithium battery, which is completely different from a lead acid battery. So if you try to use one of these lead acid chargers on a lithium battery, that thing is gonna to try to continually top this off, which could actually damage it, and you're not gonna be able to take advantage of that faster charge time. The next question we get asked is, what do I do with my lithium battery while it's in storage? The number one killer of a lithium battery while it's in storage is low voltage. So to prevent the voltage from going too low, you wanna disconnect the negative terminal on your machine. That way, if you have a parasitic draw or a clock, or anything else pulling power, that's gonna stop that from happening. Now, 
Since lithium batteries do have a low self-discharge rate, they can actually hold a charge for up to a year, but you do wanna check that every few months, and if the voltage drops below 12 and a half volts, you wanna charge the battery back up, and if you don't wanna mess with having to check it all the time, you can use a lithium charger with a maintained feature. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on is your batteries with a BMS. So the BMS protects the battery from over discharge. So if you leave your lights on or you have a parasitic draw, it's gonna put it in a safety mode, but the battery is not designed to be left in that safety mode. It needs to be charged back up. And if you leave it in the safety mode for an extended period of time, it can actually damage the battery. While we're on the topic of BMS, this new technology has allowed companies to come out with some pretty cool features like this anti-gravity battery. It has the restart feature on it. So if you leave your keys on or your battery just goes dead overnight, what you're gonna be able to do is either press the button on top or if yours is hard to reach, it, the battery will come with a remote. Press that button and you're gonna have a reserve amount of capacity inside the battery that's gonna give you three to five starting attempts. Now, as far as fitment goes, type in your year, make, and model on our website. That's gonna show what batteries fit your machine. So for us, this is our XP4-1000. This battery is gonna drop right in there with no modification, but a lot of lithium batteries are gonna come with foam inserts. So if it is a smaller battery, you're gonna be able to take up any extra space with that insert. Now, if you wanna go with the smallest battery, this is a small case battery. These are great for your custom builds. They pack a lot of power in this small case. So this one's a four cell battery, it has 120 cranking amps. So you might wanna look into this option as well. So that's your closer look at the basics of lithium batteries. If you're on the fence before about upgrading, now you know the reason why so many people are doing it. And if you need to pick one of these up, you can find them on our website. Now we covered a lot of information today. And if you have questions about any of it, leave those questions down in the comments below. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we'll catch you next time. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.